harder than I believe. Right.
Good morning. Thank you, Liz. <laughs> and welcome to those of you joining us virtually and those of you present here at All Souls Unitarian Church of Indianapolis this morning. I am Sandy Reed Ryberg, serving as the worship associate for today's service. If you're visiting us this morning, we're so glad that you are here with us. We welcome you and invite you to bring with you this morning your whole self as you join us in worship. In a few moments, we will open our service with reading our covenant above me and lighting our chalice. These rituals remind us to continually renew our promise to live into our covenant, to put love into action, and to live out the community of love and justice that we aim to be. Our topic this morning, salt and soul, refers to a ritual of parting that we will engage in this morning as our interim minister, Reverend Joel Miller, participates in his last service here with us at All Souls Unitarian Church of Indianapolis. Again, welcome and let us worship together. We have a few announcements for you now. Good morning, buenos dias. So a few announcements. First, after the service today, we have our East Coast Migrant Head Start Project open house. You are welcome to join us for that. Thank you to all who registered. It was important to have contact information, especially if you want to volunteer. And it gave us an idea of how many people to expect, but you are all welcome post the service to join me and Patricia, our campus director. We also want to invite you to join us next Sunday, June 26, for our farewell lunch for Reverend Joel Miller. <sighs> so this is a pitch and lunch. Um, we invite you to bring a favorite dish that you can share. Reverend Joel does eat gluten-free, FYI. Uh, we invite you to bring memories and good wishes for Reverend Joel, and there are volunteers needed to help with the setup, serving, and cleanup. You can find more information in the order of service, but please email Babette to that contact information. Your connection cards, you will see at the end of the pews uh, some cards that if you would like for the congregation to be in touch with you, please fill those out. Those will be collected during the offertory. And you will also see some other colored cards that will be used later in the service today. Again, welcome and let us worship this morning. The minister, the interim minister here at All Souls. Um, well, just about another week, so I, um, I was thinking about uh, goodbyes, remembering when my kids and I were, we were just driving in the car to the grocery store, but uh, their, uh, their mother's dad had uh, died a couple of weeks earlier, and my youngest child said, Dad, um, Joey at, at, at preschool, said that when his grandfather died, that he went to heaven. And I don't, know what the, I don't really know what that is. I mean, we talked about it. Um, what do you think? Where do you think Papa is? And, uh, you know, I hadn't really ever thought about, about that, answering that in a way that would fit for a three-year-old. I'd thought about it, you know, like for a 35-year-old at the time. Um, and then I heard myself say, I think Papa is with us in the, in the rain and the air and the flowers, the wind that blows. And uh, she nodded, like, oh, cool, I can work with that. <laughs> My mother, who's a, a very passionate Unitarian Universalist, is a very firm believer in heaven, but not in hell. And maybe there's some exceptions, but she's not real sure. <laughs> So uh, leavings uh, can be, I, I'll, I'll be honest, um, leavings are, are, are not easy for me. And here I am in this business where I know I'm pre-fired and I'm going to be leaving, but you know, we, we have to do that. I drove by the entrance 
kept driving. I said, oh, darn, and I turned around and drove past it a second time. <laughs> so I did make it the third time. Uh, yeah. Um, so uh, I, I uh, have a reading I want to open with before uh, uh, Elizabeth does our call to worship. Nothing is lost. The universe is honest. Time, like the sea, gives all back in the end. But only in its own way, on its own conditions, empires as grains of sand, forests as coal, mountains as pebbles. Be still, be still, I say. You were never the water, only a wave, not a substance, but a form substance assumed. I invite you to take a breath with me. These are the words, these are the words of Sophia Lyon Foz. We gather in reverence before the wonder of life, the wonder of this moment, the wonder of being together so close yet so apart, each hidden in our own secret chamber each listening, each trying to speak, yet none fully understanding, none fully understood. We gather in reverence before all intangible things that eyes see not, nor ears can detect, that hands can never touch, that space cannot hold, and that time cannot measure. Lily Kennedy lights our chalice for us this morning as we then share in the uh, recitation of our covenant. Love is the spirit of this church, and service is its law. To dwell together in peace, to seek the truth in love, and to help one another. This is our covenant. I get to do the time for all ages today. I brought some um, salt. Do you guys do? Do, do you um, all have like a salt shaker at home on your your table? Not everybody wants to have much salt in, uh, on their food. Some I, I like salt on my food. I, I like it the more I, the older I get, the more I like it on on there. I think that's a maybe an age thing. And uh, you know, there's an old tradition that if you throw some make a wish, you can throw some salt salt over your shoulder. Maybe you'll get your wish. Salt is uh, an, uh, an ancient, there's ancient stories about salt. Salt was uh, very hard to get for people a long, long time ago. It was so rare that it was, it was very, very expensive. Some people used it like money. In fact, the word salary, some of us get paid a salary rather than paid by the hour, which is called a wage. If we get a salary for our job, which actually I do, that's what I get from the, the church, the word comes from the Latin word for salt. Because Roman soldiers in the time of uh, the Roman Empire were paid with salt, and it was called a, a salary. Have you, have you ever tasted your own tears? Salty, aren't they? When um, 
when we grow in, uh, um, before we're born in the body of the person who, who, who carries us to life, the fluid around us, called the amniotic fluid, it's also salty. It's interesting that um, then we use salt to give our food more flavor. We need salt to survive in our bodies. If we don't have salt, we can't live. And yet if we have too much salt, it's also not good for us. It gets harsh, sharp. Salt used to be so precious that it was used as money. Now we have so much of it because it's so easy to mine, we put it on the streets with big trucks in the wintertime to melt the ice. I can't imagine what an ancient Roman would have thought of that. <laughs> so there are salt in our tears. And I think, I'm thinking a lot about sadness because it's hard, leaving is hard for me. And uh, um, as hard as it is, I, I love what I get to do, which is to be an interim minister. And I think a lot about salt when I'm at that moment where I have to just say, oh yeah, I'm leaving, because I've been trying to ignore it for the last couple of weeks. I think that this a last service where I really have to say, oh yeah, I'm, I'm leaving. That, that moment where I used to joke about being pre-fired and it wasn't that I was fired, but that I knew I would have to leave and, and now I actually have to say it. And that part is really hard. But you know, as hard as it is, as sad as, as I feel, I am so glad I came here and I wouldn't have it any other way. There's something about... Um, and so I think of this as having salt in my soul, or have, just being, it's okay to have the feeling of salt, the sort of way that it has a sharpness to it, but at the same time, it gives life, it, it makes life so much richer, it makes life possible even. We have to have salt to live, but it doesn't take much, and even a little bit that's too much, even a little too much, has a little bit of a burn to it. In fact, there's a, uh, an ancient saying in the, in the Christian Bible. It says, have salt in yourselves. Have salt in you. Without salt, what meaning is there to life? And it's a great saying. I always liked that saying. So for, for us in church, one of the things we live in, a, uh, the world, we, the society we live in in the United States, especially if... Um, you're a, a, a person who thinks of themselves as a man or a person who feels like they're a boy. Boys and men are often told, don't be sad. You know, um, be, actually, women are told that too, aren't they? Perk up. You know, it's okay to be sad. Although, I, as hard as I find it, I don't like it. And actually... Um, um, tear, the tears are supposed to have a sense of relief to them, but I actually don't like it. I find it really uh, irritating. It makes me mad. And yet at the same time, I think it's good for us to be able to say, this hurts a little bit. We opened our hearts to each other, and now we feel sad. But isn't it wrong to be sad? No, it's not wrong to be sad. It's fine to be sad. Because for me, it reminds us of what we love, the people we love, the deep connections we've made, the friendships. I don't want to give up my sadness because it reminds me of what makes me happy and what fills me with joy. So uh, have salt in yourselves. Be salty. Sometimes it's good to be a little salty. Reminds us of what we love of how good it is to be alive, of how beautiful it is that we get to eat dinners together or go swimming in the ocean together or that we get to have tears. Salt reminds us, ultimately, I think, of how deeply we are connected, the way that it goes into the water of life itself.
crystallizes and reminds us of who we are and what we hope to be. I think about that the next time we put some salt on the food. We will now do our opening hymn, number one, two, three, and we will be doing Spirit of Life in Spanish and in English again. I'm going to get us through the Spanish again. You'll find it in your order of service, the Spanish lyrics. So if you'll just repeat after me, I just want to get you comfortable with the lyrics because I know it can be uncomfortable to step into another language. So the Spanish is Fuente de Amor, Ven Hacia Mi. Y al corazón, cántale tu compasión. Y al corazón, cántale tu compasión. Sopla al valor, sube en el mar. Sopla al valor, sube en el mar. Hasta moldear la justicia de la vida. Hasta moldear la justicia de la vida. Arraigame, libérame. Arraigame, libérame. Fuente de amor, ven a mí, ven a mí. Fuente de amor, ven a mí, ven a mí. If you will rise, if you are comfortable for our opening hymn, number one, two, three, we will start with Spanish and then we will end with English. felt a little sadness there. <sighs> we share joys and sorrows each Sunday as part of our spiritual practice of community and our covenant to live by the spirit of love. This morning, in our larger community, we hold in our hearts Juneteenth, a day to celebrate freedom. Juneteenth is a day of celebration that has persevered despite the ongoing work of liberation of our African American community. Although slavery has been abolished, we continue to see the ways in which communities are not given their full freedom to thrive. We hold in our hearts the ongoing renewal of our commitment to racial justice this morning. Juneteenth is celebrated in a variety of ways, with deep appreciation for community and for traditions. One celebration that's happening today, in case you wanted 
uh, to know where you could go is happening at Flanner House until 5 p.m. In our All Souls community, we hold in our hearts Danny Hibner, who married Joe Hibner on June 5th. Congratulations to this couple and to a beautiful, kind and, kind and beautiful life long together. And Reverend Joel Miller had the blessing of leading their ceremony. Congratulations to you. And many congratulations to Jerry Hoover and Ellen Cyphers on their marriage as well. Congratulations. Betty, Rick, and Reverend Katie traveled to Washington, D.C. via bus this Friday, joining with other community leaders and members to the Poor People's Campaign. They were able to meet up with many other Unitarian Universalists and others to come together for the commitment of lifting up systemic racism, poverty, the war economy, and ecological devastation, unifying across differences. This morning, we also hold in our hearts Mary Branson. On Friday, June 10th, the day after her 97th birthday lunch, Mary fell in her apartment and was taken to the ER and treated for pneumonia and low oxygen. She is now in physical therapy and really wants to go home and could use some encouragement from others. You can find information for Mary's location in your order of service. We wish you Mary well, and we wish for her to get to go home soon. And finally, this morning, All Souls, next Sunday, June 26, is Reverend Joel Miller's last Sunday with us here in person. We have witnessed his care and love for All Souls for the past two years. We have witnessed him showing up for the concerns of not just the people in this building, but the building itself, and so many other things that Reverend Joel has done to support All Souls, to prepare All Souls for your next minister. It has been such a gift and a blessing for me to have had the opportunity to be here and meet you all at All Souls with Reverend Joel's interim ministry. And I know that this is heavy, and Reverend Joel was talking about the salt. Bittersweet is a real emotion that we don't often get a chance to speak about. And today and next Sunday will be bittersweet. So I invite us all to hold space for that with gratitude and humility that we had the blessing of, of having Reverend Joel, who it's said about Reverend Joel that he's one of the best interim ministers out there. So we hold, yes. <laughs> and I really am grateful that you have supervised me and made space for all that I have brought with me. And I know that he has done the same for the congregation. And so, all souls, we hold all of you and we hold all of this in our hearts this morning. I'd like to offer a prayer. Um, and one that I hope that even if you're a humanist will, uh, uh, I think humanists can pray. You just don't have to pray to a, 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 a being or deity necessarily, but to an openness, to an aspiration, to a grounding. And if you just got to meditate, let's do that too. Give us courage, spirit of life mystery beyond all words. We are alive because others have lived, and we were all born within homes we did not build. Every one of us 
has first lived with a borrowed faith, that hard-won hope of elders that held a place for our own inevitable faith. Somehow every one of us is alone and no one can live our lives but each of us, ourselves, and before we die, we will have made so many choices. So we ask, Spirit of life, live in us. Live in us so that our actions speak love. And yet we are not alone. Any act one of us chooses changes the lives of others. Just as every act others choose changes our lives. And sometimes we inevitably hurt or are hurt and almost always in error. And we know joy and our souls embrace others. We are alone and together, bound by unbreakable bonds of our existence. We know joy and sorrow. And here we are in this room. We choose to live by a faith that helps others live fully, beautifully, and truthfully. Live in our faith, spirit of life, that every moment of our living brings others joy. May we choose lives that bless life and bless the future. And when those days come that we have been forgotten by all but the spirit of life, may those great, great grandchildren of ours, whether they be by by blood or by, by love or even by spirit. May they know how cherished they were by the faith we left for them. And may they be called to the same kind of faith, one that prepares a home of love like this one, one that prepares a home that searches for truth like this one, one that seeks to do justice in the world, like this one. Live in us, spirit of life, so we may live in you. The world knows how beloved it truly is. Blessed be, so be it. Amen. This morning, half of our offertory will go to the Freedom School, which All Souls hosts each summer. Your contributions today will support this summer's programming. Currently, we have raised $1,500 of the $2,500 needed to fully fund this summer's Freedom School program. So we need a little more. Freedom School is an evidence-based summer learning and family engagement program It supports students by offering programming in a culturally appropriate manner designed to empower and promote civic engagement and literacy. To contribute, you can put cash or check into the collection plate, or if you are online, you can go to allsoulsindy.org where you will find a link that says Give to All Souls here on the left side of the screen beneath the description for today's service. Thank you for your generosity in supporting the mission of all souls and for your continued love for one another and for this world. May we now accept gratefully our morning offering. As our choir sings us through the morning offering. Thank you, choir.
I just want to say thank you so much, choir. Did you know they all tested to be sure they don't have COVID this morning to make sure that we would be safe at eight o'clock in the morning? Absolutely beautiful, thank you so much. Reverend Joel Miller came to us as our interim minister following the departure of Reverend Anastasia Zinke, who was our settled minister for seven years and the first woman to serve All Souls Unitarian Church as it's called minister. Reverend Miller had been serving a UU church in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, where my childhood friend is a member, and I called her and told her he was coming to us in Indianapolis. And she said, well, I haven't been involved very much lately, but he's pretty good. I think you'll like him. <laughs> I must say that if I were to tell someone in the, church, the UU Church in New Jersey about their incoming new interim minister, my assessment would be much more glowing than my friend's was. I would tell them that they are about to have a miraculous interim minister. who has a skill set that can take them through whatever times they may be experiencing with great wisdom, deep care, and excellent leadership. Reverend Joel came to us in the midst of the incredible uncertainty of the COVID-19 pandemic, unable to even be welcomed in person by the majority of us at All Souls, and trying to figure out how to keep a church functioning while it is essentially closed. Reverend Joel is a person who does not shy away from challenges or from solving difficult problems. He shared his own deepest personal challenges with us openly in his very first online presentation, letting us know that he has been in recovery from alcohol intolerance disorder, as I choose to call it rather than alcoholism, for 29 years now. Later on, he shared that he identifies himself as bisexual and introduced us to his daughter, Susan B. Miller, and her partner, to whom she will be married this summer, very shortly. Her fiance, Holland, identifies as a non-binary person. Meeting these two young people and hearing them share their life experiences in a Sunday morning online services was a powerful learning experience for me, and I'm sure for many others of us here at All Souls. My earliest memory of meeting Reverend Joel in person came when I was sitting in the vestibule near Christmas of 2020 distributing script gift, script gift cards that had been ordered by some of our members. Reverend Joel came up to me and we introduced ourselves to each other and it was clear that we were both frustrated by having to be masked, having to stay six feet apart, and having to be careful about spending too much time in each other's presence. I can't wait till I actually get to know all of you, he said to me. I knew then that this was a minister who would truly care about the people in any congregation he was serving. I later found that Reverend Joel and I have many things in common. We're both from the Midwest. We were both raised Unitarian Universalists. Both of us are parents, and we're both in our third trimester of life. It was looking like he would be my kind of minister. On this same occasion, I was interacting with our longtime sexton, Milton Parks. Milton and I were both challenged with impaired lungs, and we confirmed to each other that we were doing our breathing exercises to try to keep our lungs working and protected from COVID, from COVID's threat. Four, four, eight, Sandy, that's what I do, and you do too, right? Breathe in for four, hold for four, breathe out for eight. Yes, I said, keep breathing, Milton. But a short time later, Milton breathes his last in this building he maintained lovingly for so many years. Reverend Joel helped Milton's family cope with this loss at a time when the usual practices for saying goodbye were not even possible. He helped the congregation, Milton's other family, acknowledge his loss, even though we couldn't do so in person. Reverend Joel showed us through this experience that he knew how to help people facing unusual circumstances find the flexibility required for meeting basic human needs. Unitarian Universalist ministers are tasked during the first year of their assignment with fixing problems that may have been left unsolved during the previous minister's time of service. One key focus during our time with Reverend Zinke had been working toward greater awareness of racial inequity and creating a better model of inclusion within our congregation. 
Reverend Joel found that we still needed a lot of work in this area. Along with about a dozen others from All Souls, I was lucky enough to be involved in a workshop that Reverend Joel arranged for us, presented by three black Unitarians from the All Souls Washington, D.C. congregation. It was, for me, one of the most powerful race consciousness experiences I've had, and I've had quite a few in my lifetime. This was just another example of Reverend Joel Miller coming to us with the skill set we needed right at the time that it was needed. We've been so lucky, or should I say blessed, to have him at this moment of growth, change, and now renewal. After COVID, with our own version of tent services, organized largely by Reverend Joel, and with COVID still hanging around, Reverend Joel's creative problem solving has been a tremendous gift. Being a member of the worship team as a worship associate, I've been able to see Reverend Joel turn on a dime if necessary whenever 21st century challenges showed up on our horizon. COVID, racial injustice, sexual and gender identity awareness, and perhaps above all, the rapidly evident threat to earthly survival due to a changing climate. Reverend Joel was ready for all of these to be addressed in powerful and meaningful ways. We yearned to be a more accepting and inclusive congregation of people, to be stronger, wiser, and more loving. Reverend Joel led us in this direction, bringing us to a new era with a new minister, Reverend Katie Romano Griffin, who promises to keep us moving forward into our next century and a quarter. Last week, we witnessed one of those turning on a dime moments that to me was quintessentially Reverend Joel Miller. Uh, he shared, he, as he shared with us about radical hope, the kind of hope that isn't simply thoughts and prayers, but is coupled with action, we learned from him that there is scientific evidence that practicing gratitude can lead to practiced hope. As he moved into the congregation with a microphone intending to honor a few brave speakers, a ritual of gratitude that I believe has never before occurred at All Souls has uh, evolved. Almost every person sitting in the pews expressed at least three things for which they felt grateful, not to a deity or an anthropomorphic, hum human, uh, an anthropomorphic being, but rather to ourselves and to each other as a community. All Souls has always been a little leery of expressing gratitude for reasons too historical to go into right now, but that day, the gratitude shined brightly in this sanctuary. Much of that gratitude was for Reverend Joel and his ministry with us, and rightly so. At this time, I invite you to take one of the three by five cards. Those were always in my dad's pocket here at All Souls. He was an accountant. Um, those are in the pews, and take a pen or a pencil. And on the card, inscribe one word that characterizes Reverend Joel for you personally, now that we've gotten to know him and he's gotten to know us, and more importantly, we've shared love and care with each other. The word you choose might be a noun like leader, or an adjective like great, or even a verb like loving. The word I'm going to write, I've actually already written it on my card, is gentle. For me, Reverend Joel handled the roughest of problems with a gentleness I can only hope to begin to emulate. He was gentle with each of us at a time when we needed to be cared for oh so gently. The cards will be collected during the parting ceremony that follows. Thank you, Reverend Joel, for your gentle care for all of us, and may the universe carry you gently into your next ministry. Now we'll begin our parting and sending ceremony with our president, our board president, and our board vice president, Babette and Jean Miller. Hello, we are the Millers. 
I'm Jean Miller, board president. This is Babette Miller, board vice president, and we are here to recognize and honor Reverend Joel Miller, <laughs> our interim minister. As you can see, that is a lot of Millers. No, we are not related. <laughs> but we did have a lot of fun with our common last name, and we called the weekly meetings that we had Miller time. The thing about an interim minister, as opposed to a called minister, is that we know from the start that we only have them with us for a finite period of time, two years. And we know that the work that we do together during that two-year period is fairly prescribed and geared toward helping us with the process and preparations for calling our next settled minister. What we don't know, however, is how we, as individuals and as a church, might be forever changed by the interim minister. Babette and I are going to share our stories about that. My last name's Miller, in case you guys didn't know. My first name is Babette, I'm the board vice president, just in case you didn't know that either, but everybody knows this. So, you know, I've been thinking and preparing comments in my mind for weeks, knowing that this party was inevitable and looking at it with dread and then last Saturday, I happened to catch E.T., which is my all-time favorite movie. And, you know, it's a good movie, you guys. If you haven't seen it, you should. It's really good. And I think everybody's probably seen that movie. So anyway, I started reflecting on E.T.'s story, and I thought, wait a minute. This is something that I've seen before, lived before. And sure enough, it's kind of like interim ministry. We search, we seek, and we find our interim minister. And then I started thinking about what else is like E.T.'s story? Well, here we go. We get to know each other slowly and surely, and then just like that, we're bonded through our thoughts, through our lives, and through our hearts. And then inevitably we know that this bond is going to be broken by a parting, a parting that is sad and hopeful, a parting that gives us a new beginning. I love that movie too. <laughs> Reverend Joel's two years with us coincided with my first two years on the board, first as vice president and then as president. I was so fortunate to have his wisdom and experience to guide me as I grew in this leadership role. I tend to be one who tries to jump in and fix things right away, and I learned from his example of patience, of sitting back and letting discussions happen and things unfold, and then sharing his thoughts only when asked or if we were getting too far off track. I had so many questions about how we could all lean more into policy governance and he had all the answers. Or he had readily available resources that we could use to find answers together. He led by example, and I learned so much from his example. Not only did I benefit, but our entire board, congregation, and church benefited from the breadth and depth of Reverend Joel's wisdom and experience. From a governance perspective, we accomplished so much thanks to his familiarity with the Hotchkiss model of policy governance and his demonstration of what shared ministry looks like. We practiced shared ministry for two years. We know how to do that now. From a financial perspective, his background in small business helped us elevate the way we think about our finances. From budget forecasting several years out, to building our operating reserves to better prepare to care for our aging building. Additionally, he was instrumental in securing and building the initial relationship with our new tenant, the East Coast Migrant Head Start Project, a win-win for us all in terms of ministry alignment and also financially. Reverend Joel expertly led us through all the things you do as a church during an interim period. During the first year, doing all the history gathering and learning about the church and identifying our strengths and weaknesses and goals and hopes and dreams. And then during the second year, 
taking us through the process of selecting our ministerial search committee, and then working with them on all of the steps. There is a giant handbook to select our next settled minister. All of this on top of doing the usual minister's tasks, preaching, pastoral care, teaching, managing staff, programs, etc. What is remarkable to me is that Reverend Joel did all of this and did it so well in the midst of a pandemic. The usual ways of doing things flew out the door. He had to reinvent how he did ministry and how we did church. It's mind-boggling to think back on the sheer amount of things we had to figure out. How do we meet remotely? How do we stay connected? How do we do the work of interim ministry from afar? How do we come back together in a safe manner? How do vaccines change things? How do we offer gathering options to people based on their own risk assessment? I recognize all of the extra time and brain power and sleepless nights it took to figure this out. So thank you to our interim search committee for bringing us Reverend Joel. We were so lucky to have him. His wisdom, experience, dedication, huge skill set, ability to figure things out, and especially his loving care, benefited the church and all of its people. I can't imagine getting through the last two years as well as we did with anyone else. Thank you, Reverend Joel. We love you. Glad they, I'm so glad they applauded you spontaneously because I was going to ask them too if they didn't. <laughs> Thank you guys. Um, and after all of that, he still had time for conversations. Conversations with all of us about different things, things that helped us through an extraordinary time. And he had a conversation with me that has been so helpful. Um, Reverend Joel, you've given me back Unitarianism. I was wavering, I was wandering, and I was adrift. Um, I don't know exactly why, maybe that happens in everybody's life. I felt like it should have happened 20 years ago, not now, but it did. Thank you for your patience with me. Thank you for allowing me to say, well, I think that's crap, and you still talked to me. <laughs> and just thank, thank, thank you for being the Unitarian that I grew up with when I was 14. That's what brought me to church. That's what has kept me here. And thank you for letting me know that my humanism can withstand a little spiritualism. <laughs> thank you. We imagine that you may also have your own stories of Reverend Joel's impact on you. And we invite you to share those stories and thoughts in a card or note that you either mail to church this week or bring with you to church next week. It will be great to send Reverend Joel off with our stories and good wishes. So just as a reminder, next week, um, actually Elizabeth will be doing the um, service and the sermon that day, but Reverend Joel will be here and we will celebrate um, our last opportunity to be with him at a pitch-in immediately after the service where we will send him off with our thoughts and good wishes and in, in person and then in the form of notes. And also we have some parting gifts for you. So you won't want to miss that. We will now take just a moment to have the children collect the index cards. And then we will begin our parting ceremony. And Reverend Joel will ask you to stand up here with us during that.
Thank you. Thank you, collectors. You guys did an excellent job. Now we will begin our parting ceremony. The life of our religious community is fluid and ever-changing with new lives, new visions, and new possibilities. Two years ago, we welcomed you, Reverend Joel, as our interim minister at All Souls. And now we have all benefited from your presence. We have been enriched and grown as you guided us with compassion and openness through difficult times and peaceful times. Today, we must say farewell to you. It is important that we recognize these times of passage, of endings, and of beginnings. Reverend Joel, we are very grateful that you came to practice the ministry among us. We laughed, we cried, and we grew as you blessed us. <laughs> Even though you will no longer be with us, we will cherish the memories we share. We will miss this view. We are excited for the new adventure that you are beginning with a new congregation. In order to facilitate a gentle and harmonious transition to a new beginning, we have a ceremony of releasing for us all. Do you, the members and friends of All Souls, now release Reverend Joel from his role as, as Minister of All Souls? We do. Do you, members and friends of All Souls, offer your encourage, encouragement for his next interim ministry at Morristown UU Fellowship? We do. Reverend Joel, do you release All Souls from turning to you for ministry and guidance? I do. Reverend Joel, do you offer your encouragement for the continued ministry here and for our congregation's relationship with Reverend Katie Romano Griffin? I do. Reverend Joel, you are hereby released from your ministry. Oh, dang it. Yeah. yeah. You are hereby released from your ministry at All Souls Unitarian Church. We present, we present you with these flowers in a vase from Bob Ryberg. From Bob Ryberg. Oh. Beautiful. In gratitude for all that you have given, for, given us and as a blessing of a hope for the future, we present you with these words from our congregation about you and what you have meant to us. Let these be the symbol of our love and the spirit of our community that will surround you always. We give thanks for the moments we have shared with Reverend Joel in worship, in learning, and in service. May you find joy and happiness in the wondrous possibilities before you. May you the New Jersey and New Jersey. May you be nourished and sustained by the love and gratitude of all of you. find peace and kindness in every day. Blessed, blessed be. We will now sing for Reverend Joel, if you'll turn in the teal hymnal to number 1064, 1064, Blue Boat Home. And our choir will help us to sing it.
I have known such deep love from you, see such deep love in you for yourselves and each other. And I'm so grateful to have shared this with you. I am released, sent by you and by all our congregations to serve again. Keep on being your beautiful best selves. Let your lives continue to be a spring of compassion. And keep your ear and heart home for each other. Whatever it is, that spirit of life, that mystery that draws us together, be something more than we are. I know that the world needs you. Thank you. Go in peace. Be in peace.